you are probably hearing a lot about all the things that need to go on your CV. But is anybody talking to you about what should not go on your CV? That's what we're talking about today. All the things that should not go on your CV. Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel, The Bulletproof Life. My name is Ronkyo Deomumi and I'm delighted to have you here. If you are new to my channel, on here, I share tips, information and hacks to help you live a bulletproof life. So I cover topics on personal finance, business, career and lifestyle. So if you haven't subscribed, please click the red button on your right to subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to click the bell button so you can get notifications every time I share a new video. So what are we talking about today? We're going to be discussing our careers. In the last few months, a lot of companies have had redundancies, people have lost their jobs. Even those who haven't lost their jobs were still feeling a little bit threatened. At the same time, the job market is opening up. Companies are starting to hire, they're starting to understand where they're going or how they're planning to take their company forward. So they are looking to recruit. Yes, job market is opening up. So we are dusting our CVs, getting ready to change jobs, you know, or go back into new jobs now that we've been made redundant. And you're probably hearing a lot about all the things that need to go on your CV. How you need to show your work experience, your education, your skills, and so on. But is anybody talking to you about what should not go on your CV? That's what we're talking about today. All the things that should not go on your CV. If you have been putting them on your CV in the past, it's time to press delete on all of these things. And I'm going to be sharing quite a few. Stay with me. The first thing you need to take off your CV if you have been putting it on is your photograph. If you are not applying for a modeling job or an acting job, the HR person, the recruiter does not need to see your picture. So take your photograph off your CV. They don't need to see how cute you are or how pretty you are or whatever. Take your photograph off your CV. The second thing to take off your CV are vacation jobs, part-time jobs or Saturday jobs. So all the jobs you did, flipping burgers, driving Uber, you know, side jobs, side hustles that you've done to fill the gaps don't need to go into your CV. So vacation jobs, Saturday jobs, part-time jobs, that job where you were wearing a chicken costume doesn't need to go into your CV for the nice professional management job you're trying to go after now. It's taking off space that you could use to tell the recruiter or the organization about other skills that you have or other work experience that you have. Also, private information shouldn't be provided on your CV. So you don't want to include information about your religion, your favorite football team or football club, your political affiliation or what party you vote for or you voted for in the last voting year. You don't want to include what church you go to or what mosque you go to or what religion you practice. You don't want to include your sexual orientation or any of that. That's private information that could cause discrimination against you. And because companies are also trying not to discriminate, it's important that you don't provide information that could put them in that kind of position. So private information should not be included on your CV. If you have been including it, please take it out. In old CVs, we normally include reference details. I remember my first job, I included the exact name and addresses of my referees so that the company could get in touch with them. And then after a few years, we stopped including details and started writing references available on request. But now, you don't even need to write that. Your recruiter, the organization, they know your reference is available on request. That's how it works. If they ask you for a reference, you're supposed to provide it. Until then, you don't need to add that line to your CV saying reference available on request. They just know it is. So take it out if you have been including that on your CV. Also want to take out from your CV is your salary information or what you earned in the past or what you hope to earn in this job. You don't need to put that in because one, you could shortchange yourself because you could be requesting for a salary that's really low. You haven't gauged what the recruiter wants or what they haven't declared what they're planning to pay. Or you could be asking for too much and they just simply kick out your CV from the beginning because you've not had a chance to prove to them that you deserve the money you are trying to ask for. So don't include your salary requirements in, on your CV. It's not something to talk about until you've gone for your interviews. Bad grammar and big words are two no-nos from your CV. You need to read your CV again and again, read it out loud, give it to somebody to review if you are not sure. It's very important that you don't have spelling mistakes and bad grammar on your CV. It gets you kicked out of the process very early. 
Also, don't use big words. If there's a shorter word you can use for anything, please use it. Abbreviations are another no-no. Don't abbreviate if you can't provide the full meaning of that abbreviation. So saying things like, I executed APG for the BTY team on the AJZ process so that we could deliver the QYZ you know, deliverable. You, you get what I'm saying? So bad grammar, big words, and abbreviations. Take them out of your CV. They are not necessary. On professional email addresses, you should have a professional email address for job hunting. And Gmail is an easy one to register. You could do that in literally 15 minutes or 10 minutes on your laptop or even on your phone. So the email on your CV shouldn't be dirty bombastic at gmail.com. And it shouldn't be dirty siren bukola at gmail.com. It shouldn't be dirty bear drinking joe at upmail.com. It shouldn't be that kind of email. Your email needs to be professional. So your first name dot your last name at gmail.com is a good one. Or simply just your first name at gmail.com if it's if you're lucky and it's not being taken. So a professional email on your CV is important. A non-professional email should not be on your CV. So if you have been dirty bombastic at gmail.com or you have been sexy sexy dirty siren at hotmail.com, you know it's time for you to open another email address so you can have something professional on your CV. You shouldn't provide your tax details or your bank details on your CV. So your NI number, that's your national insurance number for those in the UK, or your social security number for those in the US, or even your bank details should not appear on your CV. This can lead to your information being stolen because um, the HR person that's going to look at your CV is not necessarily going to be careful with it. They will print it out in an open office or at home. They would um, share it with other people. It might be in a joint email address where all the emails flooded. You just don't want to provide that kind of information on your CV. It's not necessary. They don't need it to um, assess you. So why are you providing it? So if you've been putting that on your CV so far, that's one for you to take out. No social security number, no NI number, and no bank details on your CV. And finally, I know you are artistic and you are really creative and able to show the skills, but your CV is not a place where you show your creativity. So you don't want to use patterns, borders, or graphics on your CV and stay away from funky fonts. On your CV. I normally recommend things like Arial, Times New Roman, Calibri and those kind of steady fonts for CVs. So this is not a time for you to use a cursive, difficult to read kind of font or for you to include things like borders, graphics, smileys and patterns on your CV. So if your CV has any of that, please take it out today. And so I've just shared with you 10 things that shouldn't be on your CV. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope I've added value to you. I hope you're going to get cracking and improve your CV so you can start job hunting. It's Monday. It's just the right time for you to get on top of it and have a CV ready to share with recruiters during the rest of this week. I'm looking forward to hearing your good news. I'm looking forward to hearing about your interviews and how you are nailing it and how you've gotten your dream job. Until my next video, you take care of yourself and keep living that bulletproof life. Bye.